Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with another tropical weather outlook and discussion for Monday, May the 20th, 2024. So as always, here's a look at the latest true color visible satellite imagery provided by Dr. Levi Cowan at tropicaltidbits.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. And we can see clearly the Atlantic is still, of course, not very active at all, other than we are beginning to see some bubbling convection down here near Central America. And this will eventually be able to migrate north, northeastward over portions there of Hispaniola, as well as the Dominican Republic over the next, say, five or so days. And this could bring a lot of inclement weather. But otherwise, a lot of shear um, across much of the Atlantic here with those feathery white cirrus clouds moving from west to east and we have trade winds underneath so we're seeing about 40 to 60 knots of shear over the Atlantic right now combined with another Sal outbreak a minor one that is getting ready to move off of Africa that will keep the Atlantic at bay for the time being other than our disturbance that is going to develop down here across the southern Caribbean in the next five days. With that being said, the National Hurricane Center has not highlighted that area down in the southern Caribbean yet. As they have stated, there is no tropical cyclone that is expected in the next seven days. So in the next week, we are not looking at any areas to watch at the moment. But again, I want you all to understand we could have an area down here soon that could get highlighted by the NHC in days to come as some of the models are now picking that up with more so of enhanced precipitation and thunderstorm activity with some breezy winds from time to time over the next couple of days. Well, more like so on Thursday and beyond, we might get some enhanced rainfall and convection over these islands. But again, nothing too significant. Now, when we take a look at the latest sea surface temperatures from cyclonicwx.com, we can see definitely those waters are warming up further north. We have the 26 degree isotherm that is 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is quite warm for this time of the year. This is way usually way down here to the south this time of the year, but no. It is really, really warm in the Atlantic. In fact, we are looking at record-breaking sea surface temperatures. In some portions, we're even seeing all-time records being shattered here off the uh, African coastline near, say, the if you are near Cabo, uh, the Cape Verde Islands, it's where we're seeing some of the record warm temperatures. Doesn't seem like that right now, but you got to understand our 26 degree isotherm that's 80 degrees fahrenheit is usually way down here and this is really far north in latitude so it is bear watching in months to come on how this all evolves but very warm here in the caribbean already uh 28 to 30 degrees celsius in fact we're going to look at a closer image to prove that to you some waters here in portions of the bahamas are running well above average um, more than three to four degrees celsius above normal so all-time record high water temperatures here along into uh as well into the bay of campeche uh, in the southern gulf really really warm for this time of the year and this is really causing some concerns of what the season might develop, um, how it might develop later on in the period, more like in July, August, and especially in September. And here are those sea surface temperature anomalies as of May the 20th. Definitely very warm over here in the main development region to the south. We're seeing sea surface temperatures anywhere between about a degree and a half to about two and a half degrees Celsius, some areas localized, maybe even topping at three degrees Celsius above normal. Now, why am I using Celsius? That's because in meteorology, we usually use Celsius to describe temperature anomalies a little bit better than just using the Fahrenheit scale, which is probably a little bit more complicated. But either way, when you see sea surface temperatures um, anywhere between about a degree and a half to three degrees Celsius, that might not see much, but you gotta understand this is a huge basin of water. And when you warm it up all down here in the deep tropics, you can change the atmosphere to the north, to the northwest, and also to the northeast. For one thing, you could actually allow these tropical waves to be stronger when they come off of Africa, and when they move over these warmer waters, they could spin up pretty quickly. 
But of course, the good news is this time of the year, we don't even see or end up seeing Cape Verde season yet. That usually doesn't get going until July, but especially in August and September are the hot spots, the epicenter of the whole season, climatology speaking. The, um, the Gulf of Mexico, very warm, um, west and east of it, along the land areas, we're seeing record-breaking sea surface temperature anomalies uh, for this time of the year, which is really, really concerning when you consider that we're only in May the 20th, and we have a long way to go. The warmest sea surface temperatures usually don't peak until early to mid-September, so we have a long ways to go. It's only May. We got June, July, August, and September, so nearly four months to go before the peak of the warmest waters usually occur, and they're very warm to begin with. So now a closer zoomed in view of how this all looks on the NOAA uh, geopolar blended um, sea surface temperature analysis. Again, there are a couple of pockets here of 31, 30 Celsius. We got another little island here of 30 degrees Celsius waters off the Bay of Campeche in the near the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, we're even seeing 30 degrees Celsius waters off the southern tip of Florida like Key West, Key Largo, or not Key Largo, but... Uh, it's all over here. I get my cities confused. Sorry about that. But you get the idea. Very warm here, here, and here. And while that's little now, you got to understand southeasterly flow continues across the Gulf. And all of this warm water will pool up here across the northern Gulf. And eventually, what is now 26, 25 Celsius, which, by the way, 26 degrees Celsius, while these blue colors do look like they're cold, they're really not because 26 Celsius is 80 degrees Fahrenheit or just shy of that, maybe 79 and a half degrees. Either way you put it, they are very warm up here and they are above average and it won't take much longer before we start introducing a lot of upper 20 Celsius into lower 30s across the Gulf. We saw the Gulf got as warm as 32 Celsius last year. We could see that this time or this go around during the season. So the upper ocean heat content also is very, very warm. And we can see that here on the anomaly map uh, from the University of Miami. You can see these red colors, the loop current there, illustrating that we are seeing record-breaking upper ocean heat content. We're seeing very far above average upper ocean heat content in the western Gulf of Mexico. Actually, surprisingly, not a whole lot of that going on off the shelf waters of Florida, but down here in the Caribbean, it is very, very warm and very concerning. Um, so sea surface temperature anomalies um, from the University of Miami, uh, of course, we're looking at two to three and some areas here, even three and a half Celsius above normal. We're even seeing two to three Celsius waters above normal in uh, across portions here of the Cuba Strait, as well as uh, the Bahamas, even the shelf waters up here in the Louisiana area are warming up in a hurry. There's just only a little bit of a tongue here of near average to slightly below average anomalous waters. And even over here, because you get some upwelling with the southeasterly flow and you get the loop current that comes here, which could actually cause a little bit of upwelling to begin with in the northern Yucatan Peninsula. So now when we look at our ocean heat content in a wider perspective, we can see definitely it is very high to begin with, and it is definitely high. We've talked about this in my last three videos, and I'll continue to talk about this in my future videos because this is something that we really got to watch closely. Definitely already warmer than average, and this is octane fuel for hurricanes. It does not produce hurricanes, let alone you need a background state of the atmosphere, light shear, lots of moisture and plenty of latent heat release in the ocean to get such a storm to materialize in this environment. But this is just showing us that there's a lot of heat deep down into the ocean that can be used later on in the season for powerful hurricanes. Some of them can become intense when they move over such high upper ocean heat content of what you're seeing here that I circled in. So now another um, product is, again, the anomalous in a wide perspective, definitely on a all-time record, um, historic record um, time frame here. Actually, historic, uh, I forgot the word, brain fart here, but you get the idea. 
we are definitely above, um, historically ahead of normal, ahead of schedule. These upper oxygen heat content numbers usually don't appear until August. We're three months ahead of normal already um, to speak of because we're seeing reds, we're seeing magenta colors, uh, some spots here, seeing historic all-time record upper ocean heat content. Again, heat content alone does not produce hurricanes, but again, when you just have more heat in the oceans, more than what you typically have this time of the year, it means oceans have more time to heat up even further above average than what they are right now if this pattern does persist. So now looking at the latest GFS model, we really want to um, look at um, this carefully because this is um, there is a disturbance that we're watching closely down here in the Southern Caribbean that I've talked about at the very beginning of the video. Um, this is the uh, this is the three plot forecast, 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity overlapping 500 uh, millibar height um, in decameters, which I won't really get into. These are height thicknesses in the atmosphere and the 200 millibar upper level tropospheric wind that we look at. So three in one plot here in a, or a three in one image that I like to sometimes use in my videos. And what we have here in the next 24 hours is we have this uh, upper level tropospheric trough kind of not really cut off, but you can see this axis that is dipping all the way down, digging into the northwestern Caribbean. And usually on the right front quadrant of this, we get a lot of ascent that usually develops. And there's no surprise by that. The GFS does show some energy coming off of uh, the uh, Venezuela coastline. Some of these mountainous terrain can actually cause some low-level spin into the atmosphere. And if the atmosphere is um, cooperates enough, we can sometimes get some of these lobes of spin that move off. And if the background state is favorable, we could end up with a lot of trouble. But fortunately, this time of the year, that doesn't seem to usually happen. So let's go forward here and let's kind of um, uh, move this forward. This is again the GFS or the American model. And going forward, we can see some spin that does develop here. Again, it's not very organized. It's very innocuous looking because of course, when we have a trough like this, we do impart a lot of southwesterly shear, some dry air punching in from the west. So these systems are not able to spin up very quickly, but what they can do is produce quite a bit of precipitation. And we can see that here on our average precipitation rate where again, just because we don't have a surface slow or a closed one does not mean we won't see thunderstorms. In this case, we're clearly gonna see quite a bit of rain over Puerto Rico over the next few days here because of a lot of this ascent that is moving over the area. Again, moisture being picked up from lower levels of the atmosphere, moving it into mid-levels and uh, condensing into cloud cover and thunderstorms. And this is what we have, showers, thunderstorms, maybe, some uh, intense rainfall rates that could lead to some flood concerns and of course some breezy winds to go along with that because there is a, a little bit of a uh, an elongated surface slow that is not very well defined at this point. Now, how does this all evolve in the next, say, four or five days remains in question because if we go back and look at our atmosphere, this upper level energy or this surface energy in this upper level low will pair up with each other. And sometimes when these areas move into this trough, they could briefly become favorable for tropical development. In this case, probably a subtropical storm will likely develop off of this trough. But the background state again is very uh, breezy in the upper levels. We got um, flow that is coming out of this direction. So you can kind of think systems trying to pu push towards the Carolina coast while the upper level winds are swinging like this. That usually indicates our steering flow is going to be more like that. And the system's not going to hit the coast. But also, this is going to be very innocuous looking, very um, asymmetrical, really not anything to be really concerned about, other than it will bring in some disturbing weather um, across the, the Dominican Republic, the Hispaniola, as well as portions there of Puerto Rico. That might interrupt your day just a little bit with some interesting weather. Here's a look at the um, deep layer moisture plot again. If we go back, there is again the bubbly convection that we talked about at the beginning of the video, how this does eventually 
get scarred up to the north because of this trough that dip does dip far enough south where it can pick up that moisture northward and what we are left with is this trailing this kind of corridor this escape route for all this moisture to go and when you have enough ascend uh within the deep layer we these green colors do indicate a lot of moisture a lot of rainfall some of that could be heavy at times and we can see how that kind of closes off a little bit into a more asymmetrical subtropical system again if it does get warranted by the nhc it's probably going to be a low chance of tropical development but it's i thought it would be nice to kind of talk about that in today's video since that is a short-term threat to some of the islands well anyways that is going to do it with today's detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for monday may the 20th 2024 as always have a great rest of your day i'll be back in the office again tomorrow with another detailed update on the tropics of course a lot going on um not really a lot going on but it's always good to bear watching on what might happen in the short term especially with our disturbance that could develop in the southern caribbean in the next two to four days otherwise share if you like this video hit the like button and share this video um and uh, and leave a comment i meant uh, below this video if you did enjoy today's discussion